Shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. I am here with another. This is your girl Shade. I'm here with another slide. This particular slide is going to be on the Proto Elamite scripts, um, along with the Dravanians, Elamites, and Sumerians, which you're going to see that they're the same people, basically, is what these um, anthropologists are saying, um, biblical anthropologists. So anyways, let's go ahead and start with the first um, slide. Um, it says, the Proto-Elamite script, Clyde A. Winters, which is a biblical anthropologist, along with Alice C. Lindsay, it says, sees the connection between the Elamites, the Elamites, the African language he writes. Now, the African languages that he's he's including is it says the, the geological relationship exists between the Black Africans, Dravidians, Elamite, and Sumerian languages. This is not surprising because African language was used by Rollinson or Rollinson to decipher the cunning the cuneiform script. It says, we must consider the historical link between languages assumed to possess a geological relationship. Excuse me, just a moment here. Just a moment, I'm going to turn my volume up. On this post is, we must consider the historical link um, between the languages and assume to possess a geological relationship, although they are separate, separated by the thousands of miles. This is on the, the anthropological factor involved in determining a genealogical relationship. It's the scientific study of the carpet origin and the physical, social, and cultural development and behaviors of relation related groups. This has already been done in the earlier chapter in regards to the Black African, the Pontite, the Duranian language, languages. We have already shown that there are connections between the basic vocabularies and the identical constituent structure and grammatical categories. These are the Elamites here. I'm going to be showing you some pictures of the um, Duvani, 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 and the Samaria as well. So next slide. This is the proto elamite strip. To the left, you're going to see, to the left top, is the Elamites. And um, to the top right is the Samarian. Um, as well as at the bottom, Samarian as well. It says the, the Elamites, Duvanians, Sumerians, and Mandings The Elamite, Duvanians, Sumerians, and the Mandings are all Proto-Saharan origin. In the history of mankind, they were called the Kushites. Testimony of the great heritage of the Kushites resulted from their boldness in trade and seafaring expeditions. The authors of ancient Indian literature claim that the Kushites ruled the world for 7,000 years. According to the Epiphanes, means the age of the Kushite extended from the flood to the age of Terah, the father of Abraham, the prophet of the Jews, or the Yehudians, and Muslim. So Abraham was Shemitic and Hermetic. According to um, their discovery, and all their writings and their um, articles and research is based on the material used. They use is archaeology proof, linguistic proof, uh, migration proof, climate proof, and molecular or DNA proof. That's how they came up with their findings. These these two um, biblical anthropologists, Alice Lee and Lindsay, and also. Um, the gentleman, I'll just say his name. 
Which I want to go back. His name is uh, Clyde Winters. Okay, so next slide. Sumerian statue. It says status should be statue. Status station. In the ancient inscription of Africa and Asia, the Kushites were called many names, including Kush and Ethiopian by the Greeks and Romans. In the Sumerian inscription, the Kushites was called Maluha, Kos, Ikakasi, or Kush. There's historical evidence that suggests that the name Maluha was a geographical name for the Africans who lived in the area of Nubia in Northwest Africa. The people of Nubia are mostly associated with the name Kushi, where the C group culture group worship worshippers of Amen and Nia. The Egyptian term for these people was Kish and Kish and Kish. The Hebrews called them Kush. And the, the cuneiforms, cuneiforms inscription, excuse me, the Sudanese were called Kushia, Kushia, Kushia. That's what it sounds like to say. So the top here, this is, this is Sumerian statue here, and this is the Sumerian um, city. So old ancient city. Okay. But Elamite inscription, he says the Elamite inscription, the Kushite belongs to the Ma Confeder Confederation. As a result of this Kushite origin in Asia, we find many place names with the term Kush, the Kushana, or Central Asian, the Kishmer and Hindu Kush. According to the second paragraph, according to the Masya, an ancient book from India, the world belonged to the Kushites or Sakas, as they are sometimes called. I suppose 7,000 years, for 7,000 years they were called. In the, um, I hope I'll just cut this up. In the Mahabharata, the Sakadipa is the land of the Kushite or Sakas. The second mountain of the Sakadipa were named Maru, Malaya, Jalahara, Rabata, Sarama, Durgasala, and Kasara. Clear me for that uh, motorcycle if you hear that. That was really loud. I'm on the last paragraph. The mural of Indian literature may be known other than the Maro of Sudan or the primitive Maro, Maro that was long ago um, lost in the cataclysm. The four kingdoms of Saka were Maga, Mango, Masaka, Mansa, and Manding, Mandaga, Mandaga, and Mandaga. It's a the manga remind us of the Majin or the Maka of Persian description. The Masaka and the Mahabharata are called Kastrisia. The Mandakas or Manda were also probably Meda or the Medes. These Median may have had a connection with the ancient Mandi speakers of Africa, especially the Mandi, who often accompanied the Dravanians out of Middle Africa and Asia. This would explain the close relationship between the Elamites and the Mandin languages. So I'm going to be showing you all four individual, all four of those um, um, languages or people: the Darvanians, the um, Mandi, or Manda, or Mandi, the Sumerians, and the Elamites. And we should be coming up on that next that's slide later on. But here, here is the Mandi. It's called the Mandi people. Uh, it says this would explain the close relationship between the Elamites and the Mandin language. The Mandi people are an ethnological, et, ethnologic, linguistic grouping of native Africans ethnic groups who speak Mandi language. Various Mandi speaking ethnic groups are found particularly in the western region of West Africa. The Mandi languages are divided into to two primary groups, East Mandi and West Mandi. It says Mandi is a family of ethnic groups in Western and Western Africa who speaks any of the many related Mandi languages of the region. Various Mandi groups are found in, found in Clyde A. Winters and the Polygus. So these are the uh, Mandi people here to the left. And it says this, this would explain the close relationship between Elamites and the Mandi languages. 
looks slide. Okay. Proto Elamite script. To the left at the top, you see the, the Elamite script. And at the bottom, you see Elamites being taken in by the Assyrians at the very bottom of the, uh, the uh, screen. Clark A. Winter sees the connection between the Elamites and African language rights. The geological relationship exists between the Black Africans, Duranian, Elamites, and Sumerian languages. And it goes on again, this is a repeat. This is not surprising because African languages were used by Rawls to decipher the coniform. It says, we must consider the historical link between languages assumed to possess a genealogical relationship. Although they are separated by thousands of miles, the anthropological factor involved in determining a geological relationship is a scientific study of the cognitive origin and physical, social, and cultural development and behavior of the related groups. This has already been done in the early chapters with regard to the, uh, to the um, Black African Putis, Duranian languages. We have already shown that there is connection between the basic vocabulary and identical distinguished structure and grammatical categories. Now, I, I, I think I, I gave this um, paragraph, a couple of paragraphs here before, but what I want to do is show you the actual uh, script of the Edomites and also the people um, that wrote those scripts um, or belong to the scripts of the Edomites, which is related at the bottom of the, the um, screen. It says the proto Elamite script continues. The Elamites, Dra Dravanians, Sumerians, and Mandians are all of the proto Saharan origin. So, in other words, they're all the same people. They're all the same people, which are um, the ancient Israelites or the ancient Hebrews or the current proto Saharan. Um, our descendants have their descendants, which we show was the Mandis, um, the Dravanians, uh, the Elamites, the Sumerians. And the, the seed of these people still exists. They just call different names. And most of them are found, you find some of them in Mali, on Chad, <coughs> and Burkina Faso, in those areas, West Africa, in Sahara, what they call the Sahel. Okay, that says that the picture to the left that says deporting the people of Elamite city of then Sumerians. So these are Elamites, I mean Elamites right here. And these are the Assyrians taking them into captivity. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's our ancestors going into captivity. Proto Elamite scripts continues. It is Clyde A. Winter, anthropologist. In the ancient description of Africa and Asia, the Kushite recalled many names, including Kush and Ethiopian, by the Greeks and Romans. I think I went over this already. I did. I put it again because I was only just wanted to show you. Um, this is a statue of a um, a um, Elamite. Yeah, it says, um, Kai Winters, anthropologist in the ancient description of Africa and Asia. Um, the Kushites were called many names, including Kush and Ethiopia by the Greeks and Roman. In some inscription, the Kushites were called Malasha, Kasi, Kush. Um, yeah, I did read this. Um, I did read this earlier. There is every historical evidence that suggests that the name Maluha was a geographical name for the Africans who lived in the area of Libya and the Northwest. So I just kind of like repeated it with this, just with a picture. A statue with um, the Elamite, not Elamite. Yeah, this is an Elamite. This is actually an Elamite, not Elamite. Elamite. Um, and then I got off the website. Look at I dream of I dream of genie shoes. <laughs> oh, okay, nine next. Okay, it says, an Elamite, an Elamite, an Elamite. Dr. Vamos taught has illustrated how the inhabitants of the Carpathian Valley and other culture around the world shared a similar culture. In all the countries sharing place named Dr. Bader found a common toponym 
Tamala, Tamena, Tapua Tamena, Taponi Tamena. He, he therefore called the central culture civilization Tamana. It is interesting to note that the proto saharians formerly lived in this area. The word Tamana means great place. These ancient Tamana sites were probably forced established an area accompanied by the hostile non proto saharian speaking language people. It says, this is the third um, paragraph, it says the Kushites were, when they migrated from Middle Africa to Asia, called themselves Kushites. This is most evidence in place names and the names of gods. The Kushites, chief rulers of Iran, occupied the central part of Zagros. The Kushite gods were called Kush, Kush, Kashu, which was also the name of the people. The Kish name element is also found in India. Now, remember they migrated from um, Nubia all the way through Mesopotamia, all the way up through India, and even and and also into uh, uh, China as well as uh, Japan. The whole I mean, the whole uh, um, people Kushites migrated all over the all over the world and became builders in everywhere they went. They took their language, they took their skills, they took their culture, they took all that with them. They did, they just built in the places where they migrated. <laughs> Let's go back to the third um paragraph. It says the Kushites when they migrated from Middle Africa to Asia um, called themselves the Kushites, nation builders. This is most evidence in the place names and the names of gods. The, Kush, the Kushites, chief rulers of Iran, occupy the central point of Zagros. The, Kush, the Kushite god was called Kushu, which was also the name of, of the people. The Kish name elements is also found in India. For example, the, Kat, the Kish, Kati, Kish Kataya was a name applied to an ancient Dravanian king, kingdom in South India. Also, it should be might remember that the kings of summer were often referred to as the kings of Kush. Now, the the um the um Dravanians are the in the um it's in is as uh, the Indians, not like any Indians, but of uh, India. Uh, those are they, they have found that um the came the Dravan the, the ancient Dravanian was from from India. I remember again, Kush I migrated from West Africa through Mesopotamia, through India, all through Asia, like Japan, and, and even the Philippines. So they migrated everywhere. Um, surely, I guess they did if they was builders for 7,000 years. It says, an Elamite continues. It says, a major Kushite tribe in the Central Asia were called Kashina, the Kashans, of, a, of China were Ta Yati, or the Great Lenore race. Along the South Swamp, there was a state called Kushi, a Tabi. The city of Kasan was situated in the direct direction of Kashan, which was located in the west part of the Gasu province of China. In this chapter, we will explain how the Elamites, Dravanian, Mandi, and the Sumerian language diverse from a common Paleo-African language. The ancient Proto-Saharan from their literature and culture appears to have descended from a common ancestor. The social linguistic reality of a number of related groups 5,000 years ago is proven by comparison of terms uh, from uh, Dravanians, Elamites, Mandes, and Sumerians, which show Share features retains a, retained during the process of diverse, diverseness from a common ancestor. So all these people, the Dravanians, the Elamites, the Mandi, and Sumerian, had share features that was originated from Africa, or of African descent. This is there is no area of there is no area of linguistic structure which can totally resist change, but that area of language least accessible to foreign influence is the basic vocabulary. The basic vocabulary of a language is that 
sector of the lexicon which comprise the basic element of one culture, the division of the body, and biological activities such as eating, sleeping, etc. But the lexical comparisons are not enough to prove a genealogical relationship because grammar and morphology holds presence over phon uh, phono phonology and sight uh, syn syntax. This is as a result below, I will elucidate, elucidate the interrelationship between the Darvanian, Elamite, Mandy, and Sumerian, and the common retention rate with, within the members of these Proto Saharan languages. The Proto Saharan language or initiative, these languages subject S, verb, I guess S, the subject S, verb, and the object. So it's subject, verb, and object is the order of basic constituents. Which may sound a little. Um, now, if you want to go read the whole article, I think I'll go all the way back and then I will give it to you. Um, Basically, basically, it's on again. It's on a website called Just Genesis, and that's by um, Alice Lee Lindsay. She has a website, and you will find. Um, um, just type in his name, and then it will bring up the article. If you want to read the whole article, I didn't want to do the whole article. It would take it oh, too long, so I just thought I'd pick out some things. And it says a proto element script. So this is what I did. Um, the top left is a Mandy girl of Mali and Gambia. So remember, it was the Dravanian, the Elamites, the Mandian, and Sumerian, which shows shared features retained during the progress of diverse from common ancestors. So the second one is to the right, top right is the ancient Sumerians. And that's a statue of the ancient Sumerian. The third left ancient Elamites, which most of the pictures uh, online is just going to give all the ancients of uh, the Elamites on like on the wall of um, Egypt or on the walls of the Sumerians, Persia. So I just thought I would use that one um, for the Elamites at the bottom, um, to the left, bottom left. And then the bottom right is a Duranian dancer, an ancient Duranian dancer. So I was trying to um, um, try to get some um, photos of uh, the um, group of people that they're discussing on their um, article. So when they say articles, they be long articles, <laughs> but they're really informative. So this is the last one. Well, no, actually, it's one more after here. So I thought this was really neat. She has an article um, dated Feb December 15, 2023, Dr. Alice C. Lindsay, The Root of the Gospel in Africa. So you may want to, I was going to do, do a problem, a video, I mean, a, a um, slide on that one to create one that says a denialogic Hebrew understanding of human condition and our need of God saving mercy is evidence in the Genesis um, chapter one through three. Now Genesis chapter one through three talks about the area of the now the different now rivers the rivers when the God of Eve was created. It it uh, mentions Ethiopia or Cush and also Euphrates rivers and so forth, Gihon. So although the, all of those rivers was in Africa. So if you want to go read the chapter, go read it because that's what this one is going to give you the narrative of the um, creation of uh, the um, Garden of Eden. It says a nilotic Hebrew understanding of the human condition and our need of God's saving grace is evidence in the Genesis 1 through 3 narrative, which have their closest parallels in the African creation story. This should not surprise us. Genesis 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 6 through 8, makes it clear. That some of the some of Abraham's Hebrew ancestors lived in lived in Africa. His ancestor Nimrod was a Cushite. Now we know Abraham Ham is Abraham. He was also Hamitic and Shemitic, you all. I didn't know that. So his mom, I'm assuming his mom was probably Hamitic and father was Shemitic, and we know that runs through 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 Abraham, Isaac, and Jake, and all through them because they was marrying um, Hamite Egyptian women. So um, that makes sense. It says the African themes are concisely woven together in the Genesis creation stories. These include the dark 
prima water, the separation of the water above from the water below, the creation of human from the soil, humus, a humus, the tribal first parent, the tree of life and dangerous serpents and estrangement uh, from the heavenly father. And that the writer has to be humble and never think you are better than anyone else. For dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. I thought I would just put that in there because that is an article that she has a full article on that. If you want to go read that. Last slide. So I just thought I'd show you the last slide of Africa. Um, you have Algeria at the top, and then Libya, Egypt, Niger, Nigeria, Chad. So this is the um, motherland. And this is where creation started was in Africa. And she's, as you um, see, she said here that the root of the gospel, the roots of the gospel are in Africa. And that means the root of Africa right here. Right. So that's about it. I just thought I'd share this um, small slideshow. As you know, my Tired is always food for thought. So this is a lot of food for thought. You may even go ahead and do your own research. And basically when I do these slides, it's just to encourage people to go do their research based again on proof other than just the Bible. Because if the Bible quotes something in the scripture that says it's going to take place, then we should be able to go outside of the Bible and find out that it happened. And this is what she and a lot of fair anthropologists, those who want the truth and not try to twist it and change it and manipulate it. That's why I like doing a lot of videos on her because She's pretty um, she's pretty fair. And it seemed like the people that she worked with is also they just base the truth based on the finding of, you know, um archaeology, proof, and linguistic. They look at all this migration, climate, and molecular or genetic um proof. So again, I hope you all enjoyed this um little short vid um video. And sh um share this and encourage others to go do their own research because you'd be surprised. Um, I think a lot of times we think that. We can look at someone and tell where they're from, but if the Kushites migrated and Nubians throughout the world, that means that when you migrate and then when you go through different climate change, and even with the linguistic, because you interchange with the people that you're mixing with, I mean, you pretty much kind of change the way you look. But again, I think almost 95 or probably 90 or more percent of the time, the features will always be there. Now, the color may change, the eyes may change, the hair texture may change, the skin color change, but the features will be there. And that's what the gentleman has said, um, Clyde, um, the anthropologist said earlier in his writings. So again, I hope you all enjoyed this. Go check it out. Do your research. Um, you can't just look at someone and say what they are, where they came from. <laughs> you really got to do the research. So again, um, you all have a blessed evening. Say shalom and have a, a good night.